There are thousands of DOS games. Most of them are terrible. I play one selected at random with a 20 minute time limit and record it live. This is the result. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another random DOS game show and Microprose presents, which is a good sign, a Simtex software production. That's right, it's Master of Orion. The original one. Now, I've played Master of Magic on this channel, it went the full 20. I played Master of Orion 2 on the channel, it went the full 20. Uh, so, I think it's fair to say I like Simtex games and I like Microprose as a publisher. So, this should go well. We have an opening cinematic, essentially showing that there's planetary warfare and bombardment and stuff. Look at that. Back and forth, empires in space, constantly fighting each other, and they look suspiciously like Klingon birds of prey, but slightly different because copyright. Awesome. Okay, they've been driven off, and that's uh, that's our nice intro, short and sweet and to the point. So we've got ourselves a nice menu, and uh, we've got the sign canvas playing a Rakno sound font. So let's hit new game and see what happens. So just like in the second one, there's probably going to be a lot of parallels and a lot of similarities. We've got the choice of galaxy size, difficulty and the number of opponents. That looks fine to me. We'll just have a simple game and see what happens. So we've got a choice of choosing race here. So let's briefly look at the races. So we've got uh, the Mershan, which have superior gunners. The Silicoids that can seemingly go anywhere. Um, the Sacra are good at breeding. The Cylons, isn't that from Battlestar Galactica? Superior research techniques. Superior pilots. Increased worker production. Because ah, they look like ants. Yeah, workers. Yeah. And the Bulrafi. We are swole, brother. We can take you out on the ground. And we have the Mechlar, who have factory control enhancements because they look like robots. And the Darlock, who are like Jawas if they were crossed with the lead protagonist of Thief, Garrett. So let's go with human, because I'm a massive racist. I mean, just because. And uh, let's go with blue. Blue's a nice color. Your name is Lassitus. Well, you were close. It's actually Lonitus. Now, Lonnie. <laughs> Homeworld is Sol, of course it is. And let's get cracking. With the humans in Master of Orion. Now, I, I don't know if it's just my copy, but this happened at the start as well. There was an extended black screen. And here we are. Each star system divides its production into five areas. Ratio bars show the breakdown of planets' production. Right, so you you attribute a certain amount of production to various bits and pieces, and it functions as a ratio of a production whole. Okay, that makes sense. Ship production ratio, decrease, decrease production, <laughs> defense production, industry, ecology, or technology. Red ratio bars indicate that the production bar has been locked and will not change. Ah... So we've got ourselves a little tutorial right at the start here. That's cool. So we've got the uh, population, number of colonists in millions. So it's 50 million, it's not just 50 people. Number of missile bases, total planetary production. Ah, oh, okay. Actual production adjusted for maintenance, spying and trade. All oh, right, right. So it's got like the production total that the gross sort of total and then it subtracts based upon everything else that's going on. Okay. Change ship design to build in the star dock. Relocate ship production to another colony. Transport production to another colony or invade enemy planet. Okay. That makes sense. So already, right from the get-go, um, it's giving us more information than Master of Orion 2 was. Which is surprising, because this was created before 
which isn't surprising. <laughs> so you can see of load games, music sound settings, okay. Fleet report, diplomacy, uh, change research priorities, okay. And because they couldn't fit all the boxes in one window or didn't want to overwhelm the player, they've set all the other stuff as a second window. So you've got your overview. Okay, okay. So I probably shouldn't have clicked past that. Oh, well. So, okay. This is the game. Uh, let's go to the game. Is there any... Uh, oh, there is music. But it's not playing currently. Okay. I, I guess we'll silently observe space. The final frontier. So we got ourselves a scout here. A bomber, a colony ship, a scout, destroyer. I guess we want a scout, right? Uh, let's... Alright, so that's just cycling through the various ships and it's all zero. Right now. So... If we change the ratio so that it's one year, um, that'll help, I guess. And then if you change what it is, the number of years it'll take obviously changes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, our ecology's gone to waste because of this. But we need to grind out a ship, otherwise... Why else will we scout anywhere? Because we, we don't have any other planets. So let's briefly look at all the various things. You've got your, your basic game options. Very, very basic. Because this was back, what, 93 or so? You know, you, you didn't have a lot to go on. Design. Oh, wow. Even back then, you could design something. Like, uh, this was something that I, I didn't touch on in Master of Orion 2. Uh, and my brother will probably slap me over the head for, for not mentioning it. But one of the cool things you could do in Master of Orion 2 was design your own custom ships. And this apparently appears to be a thing in the first one as well. So you can change the size and uh, the icon. Let's Ah, let's, oh, look at that. We can make a Star Destroyer. <laughs> okay, that, that's pretty cool. And it's one of the main options, design. Fleet. So apparently we do have two scouts and a colony ship available to us. So maybe we didn't need to, to change the ecology. Hmm. We've got a galaxy map. Showing, uh, oh look, it says color coded and everything. Uh, so we we know where the Bull Rafi. Do do we know where they are? No, we don't, because we've got our little human flag there, but everyone else is like an unknown entity. We haven't made contact yet. Uh, we we've no idea about environments because we haven't sent out any scouts. Likewise with minerals. Okay. And there is the diplomacy screen, which essentially says, yeah, we, we haven't done anything. Uh, we've only got soul, so don't need to look at that. Um, we're just researching various things here, and it's got those sliders again. Whoa, I just completely wrecked that. Uh, we, we don't want to dump everything into weapons. No. That, that's fine. That'll do. Um, so, if we... We can cycle through the active ships, I believe. Uh, let's send a colony ship. White stars burn incredibly hot and generally have hostile planets. Oh, thanks for the information. Uh, rich, lifeless planets. Uh, we don't want that. Red stars are old, dull stars that commonly have poor planets. Eh, not great. What about that one? Chance of discovering Terran and Subterran. So there we go. Choose a destination and number to send. So if we hit that. Destination is out of range. 
five parsecs from closest colony. Ah. Oh. Okay. So if we hit cancel, does that just clear out that move? Yeah. So we can change the fleet deployment to zero scouts, uh, one scout in a colony ship. And then is there somewhere nearer that we can go to? I don't want to go to that white star. Destination is out of range. Huh. ETA three turns, right? So they can go to those ones. What, what is that? What is that? Right, that's the white star. Uh, but the red star is, is probably the one that we want to go to. Because from the red star, we can then... Uh, hmm, how, how do we drag the map? Oh, you, you can drag with the uh, left or right... I think it's the left click. Come on, James. Get control of your mouse. So we'll send one scout and one colony ship to the red one and accept. Okay. So that's on its way. And then there's another scout. You can see the fleet deployment there. It's split off. And we can send it to go, go, go to that white one. Okay. So they're on their way. And I guess we can hit next turn. Okay, everyone has made their move. And obviously it's it's a transitory phase. Because we haven't got our ships to the other planets yet. So let's just have a look at uh, a Terran planet of Sol. So it's a Terran environment. Interesting looking colour. Uh, planet size 100. That's interesting that the, the, the planet is called Sol. You'd, you'd think we should have called it Earth. Oh well. Uh, okay, so if, if we boost the defense spending. What, what happens if we pump up the eco? Does that change from waste to anything? Clean. <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll we'll get that to clean, sure. Oh, right. I, I see what's happened here. If we if we bump up the ecology to full, it actually benefits the populace. It improves the population. It's got a cap of seventy eight, and we got fifty one at the minute. So we we can technically you know dump everything into uh, eco, but let's let's just keep a clean eco. And uh, let's just uh, boost that somewhat. <laughs> it will take 560 years to develop a ship. That's good by me. Yeah, let's let's go next turn. Okay, Proxima, Tundra, hostile, population 40. Scout ships explore a new star system. Hostile environment. Population growth is halved. Okay. You know, I really thought there would have been some music here. I mean, there was an intro. So, I, maybe, maybe it's just for uh, combat or something. I'm not sure. So, have we got... What, what's happening with you? One turn. Oh, that, that's, that's cool. A little animation of the ships going. And we've got this fleet. And this star. Now, have you done your due diligence here? Can, can we send you on? We'll send you on to that one. I think, I think he's done that. Yes, because that's Proxima. So we now know that that has a planet called Tundra there. All right. Let's hit next turn and see what happens. Oh, look at that. We found some crypto. <laughs> so the galaxy, or the, the star is called Crypto, and it's got a planet called Step. Build a new colony? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? In the year 2302, the humans form a new colony. Colony name? 
uh, crypto, I guess. I was going to call it Lonnie Land, but crypto will do. All right. And I, I like that nice, nice, that nice music. So we've got almost no populace, and I'm not sure about the rest here. This bit, you know, it, it would take a little bit of uh, manual, you know, reading to sort of determine the best sort of balance for everything. I think if we turn down tech, uh, ship and defense, I think we may have locked it there accidentally. Oh well. And uh, what have we got? Uh, ships. We've nothing. Because we've used the colony ship. That's right, to form the colony. Come on, James, keep up. <laughs> Uh, so let's let's send that scout over there. That'll take six turns, and let's go back to Seoul. This is all very intuitive, I have to say. Quite easy to pick up and just play. Um, so that just changes the development. I think we need another colony ship, but it'll take a long time if we do that. So, let's build a fighter, for no reason, just cause, you know? Choose the area of research our scientists now focus on. Look at that smug scientist in his super scientific suit. And listen to the music, lovely. So, computer technology. This is much like civilization, you've got research levels and stuff. Oh, it's getting funky. Come on. De -de -de. Oh, fantastic. ECM Jammer Mark 1 adds one level of defense against enemy missile attacks. Well, we're not going to make any enemies because we're lovely. Uh, Deep Space Scanner detects enemy ships up to five parsecs away from your colonies. That sounds handy. So let's go with the Deep Space Scanner. Okay, the year is 2304. And we've produced our first fighter craft, which is orbiting over Seoul. So let's send that out on a reconnaissance mission to that star. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> uh, what about what about that one? Yeah, go there, and off he goes. It's all very easy to pick up. And that's something I really appreciate about the old 4X games. This is a 4X game. It's a turn-based strategy, but it's in that 4X genre. Uh, expand, explo explo explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate, I think the, the, the term is, off the top of my head. I, I don't have that written down somewhere in a notepad, you know. Uh, but yeah, the later ones required so much micromanagement and overcomplicated things to such a degree that for somebody who's not that familiar with the genre, they can be quite elitist and impenetrable in their design. Master of Orion here, very, very simple to figure everything out. Like, you've got it all there. Look, we're, we're doing a deep space scanner, you know, we're researching stuff. Everything is going fine. You can change things with the bars, you know. It's not complicated. You know, if you if we wanted military dominance, we could switch out all the industrial and ecological stuff and say, nuts to that, we're building a vast fleet of Star Destroyers with souped up weapons. But as it is, I'm taking a more sort of balanced approach. And I've probably done something, you know, horribly wrong. Uh, let's just wait. Right, scout ships explore a new star system. Ah, cool. And we built ourselves another fighter. Okay, Master's Notes. Looks like a tooltip of some sort that's popped up at the start of this turn. Now that your home planet has a substantial population and industry, you should begin allocating resources towards building missile bases by increasing the planet's defense ratio. Sure, let's do it. Let's, uh, let's just switch out everything. And uh, we'll... Uh, we, we'll, we'll build another colony ship as well, but first we'll get those defences. Uh, so there's our step 
environment in crypto. Now, it has almost nothing in defense, but now I lock that. You click there and that can lock the ratio. Um, I think if we develop defense there, it would come as a detriment to the planet. So I'm just gonna switch everything up and you could probably uh, change that. It's set to none at the minute, but I'm not too worried about that. Let, let, let my ships roam. Okay, so we've got this over here. This is this new arid planet that we discovered. Uh, and we've got various other ships that we can send out to explore all the other star systems. And eventually, you know, on the map, we, we've there's only a tiny bit of a galaxy here, you know. Tiny, tiny. I, I, I came up, with, it came up with a notification there, but I've missed it. Oh well. Guess it wouldn't be of critical importance. But yeah, the rest of the galaxy is out there to explore. And we're going to stop here. And the reason is 20 minutes have gone past. And just like Master of Magic, just like Master of Orion 2, the original Master of Orion has just completely sucked me in and made time irrelevant. So who would I recommend it for? I actually know of uh, two projects that are running uh, external to each other. There's one called Remnants of the Precursors, which is a rebuilt Master of Orion with different assets uh, in Java, I believe. And then there's uh, a open source version of the engine, which I believe offers a number of enhancements as well. And I can't remember the name of that, but I will link it in the description of this video. But yeah, uh, 4X fans, Fans of turn-based strategy, fans of space games, instant play just completely brings you into its world. The only downside, aside from, you know, slightly dated interface and graphics, is there's no music. There's just a vast silence in between notifications. Mm, that annoys me a little, but, you know, it was 93, so I let it off the hook. Plus, you can always stick on some awesome classical spacey music in the background if you really need it. And if you like me talking about old, old DOS games, I have played hundreds in all kinds of genres. Feel free to take a look. And if you like what you see there, you can hit the old subscribe button. And if you really enjoy my adventures in space, you can become a patron. It's an option. It's there. My Patreon is available. Look at all these fine people who have said, Yes, Lonnie, we want to give you money. So yeah, Master of Orion, brilliant as expected, and yeah, go play it, it's great. Until next time.